Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I'm uh, Richard Lloyd Parry, a professional member of the club, and I'm very glad this morning to host this event of the Professional Activities Committee and to welcome our guest, uh, Ayoko Watanabe, who is, as you know, the director of the First Division, Second Intelligence Department, Public Security Intelligence Agency. Uh, I don't think I need to say too much ab about her, but uh, as you probably know, uh, Japan is unusual among large Western industrialized democracies in not having a, a kind of consolidated, consolidated centralized intelligence apparatus. There's no equivalent of the, the CIA or FBI or MI6. Instead, responsibility for intelligence gathering uh, is shared among several agencies, the National Police Agency, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Public Security Intelligence Agency, or the PSIA. It's probably the, the least known of those three, um, which is one reason why we're glad to have Ms. Watanabe here. Uh, she's going to talk to us for probably 25 minutes or half an hour. She will show a short film, uh, and then she will invite her questions. Uh, she. Uh, has been with the agency just over a year, and she has a background as a public prosecutor in Japan, uh, and among other things, she spent part of her education at Harvard University in the United States. So she will be speaking and answering questions completely in English today. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Watanabe, and please begin your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. Um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to, to talk about this issue in front of you. Uh, and let me allow to talk without wearing masks. We believe we have enough social distance. So um, let me talk about the PSIA a bit. Maybe. Uh, as he explained kindly, some of you think who you are. PSIA stands for Public Security Intelligence Agency. We are an external branch of the MOJ, Ministry of Justice. And our goal is, if we say simply, to ensure public security. And how? The one thing, we gather intelligence. As our name state stands, uh, we gather intelligence and analyze and provide for thank you, and provide the people who need. And the intelligence could be uh, internal and external affairs that could affect the public security of Japan. Um, the second and not least, uh, our mission is to conduct surveillance over all syndical based on the Organization Control Act. The latter one is the reason why we come here. And if you want to know about PSI more, please visit our website. I put on our website, okay? Um, why I'm here today is quite simple. This is my goal. Our goal today is to share our message with you. That is, Om Shinrikyo is not history yet. To do that, I'm going to explain my plan today. First, as he said, uh, I'm going to show you a small video clip, very short, uh, three and a half minutes, I guess. And then I'm going to make a presentation that's going to review the video and elaborate a bit. Then, last but not least, I'm going to take your questions, okay? And these colleagues are, my, are also from the SIA. They are here to help me to answer your questions. OK? 
Okay. Then let me show you the video first. Acts of terrorism continue to occur throughout the West and the Middle East. You may think terrorism only happens in places far from Japan. However, Tokyo was once the site of large-scale terrorist attacks that shocked the entire world. The nerve gas, known as sarin, was released within subway cars running through the center of Tokyo in the first act of indiscriminate terror of its kind. A quarter century has now passed since the so-called Tokyo subway sarin attacks. The Aum Shinrikyo cult was responsible for the attacks. At the time, the cult had more than 10,000 followers. Cult founder Shoko Asahara introduced a ministerial system modeled after the national government with the aim of establishing a dictatorship headed by Asahara himself. The cult was very active, even fielding many candidates in national elections. After defeats in national elections, the cult began arming itself by manufacturing small automatic rifles, producing sarin gas and more, and many murders were committed by the cult. On June 27, 1994, cult followers released sarin gas near a judge's apartment building in Matsumoto City, Nagano Prefecture. The damage was severe, with eight people killed and approximately 140 injured. Then, on the morning of March 20, 1995, the cult again released sarin gas, this time on board five Tokyo subway cars bound for Kasumigaseki Station. Thirteen people were killed, and more than 5,800 were injured. Many of the victims are still suffering from the effects of the gas to this day. Asahara was arrested and tried along with many followers on charges of homicide and other crimes. And in July of 2018, 13 cult members, including Asahara himself, were executed. The cult continues to be active, centered around the groups, namely Aleph, the group led by Yamada, and Circle of Rainbow Light, which follow an absolute faith in the former death row inmate Asahara. In particular, Aleph shows no signs of changing their antisocial nature. For example, the group instructs followers to write wills, which prevent family members from collecting their bodies after death. The assets of the groups are increasing year by year. At the same time, little progress is being made with respect to compensation to the victims of the incident and their families. Meanwhile, Aleph hides behind pseudonyms and uses social media and events to recruit new followers, particularly among the younger generations. The cult is currently under surveillance by the Public Security Intelligence Agency. The Aum Shinrikyo cult is not merely a historical relic. It is a current problem that persists even today. Thank you. Uh, that is the video clip. Uh, by the way, we publicized the Japanese version maybe last year, but the English version, this is the very first time we showed in public. You're lucky, okay? And then let me move to the, my presentation. And before that, uh, if you allow me, can I ask a quick question? Is any of you here in Japan I was in Japan on the very day sarin attacks, 1995 March. You, sir? And how about, oh, are you in Tokyo or? Oh, thank you. So let me 
so in that case for you uh, sarin attack is something happened somewhere in the world mm -hmm. so not you really experienced that attack if I say so uh, where, why I say so is that I was a college student at that time and studied in Tokyo but uh, on the very day I was not in Tokyo because of the spring vacation. I was in my hometown at that time. But I uh, vividly remember the sarin attack as my own experience. Not I experienced uh, literally, but I s watched TV and a kind of experience through the TV. And um, say, uh, but the as it says, 25 years passed since that. That means for some ages, for some young generations, that is a history. That is something happened. That may have happened, they may think. Uh, we think it is to be concerned. It is not a history. It is ha happened in Japan here. That is my message, and to explain that, let me move to my presentation again. What is ah, sorry, I bought it. Ah. Yes, this is BSIA, and let me move to uh, my main topic, Om Shinrikyo. Om Shinrikyo, as you know, this is a Japanese religious cult founded in 1984 as the name, as, as the name at that time is Om Shinsen no Kai. And then 1987, he renamed its name Om Shinrikyo. And the founder is Jizuo Matsumoto. He's, it's his real name. He's but well known as Shoko Asahara. That is his photo. And social background at that time, nine, late 1980s and early 1990s in Japan was like a kind of boom of the new religion. And people, especially young people, desiring to supernatural power and utilizing that background, all progressed to how to get more followers. And the one more thing they did was they utilized media very much. Um, let me give you some traits of the Aum Shinrikyo. They did group living, uh, they live and sleep together and it, will, it must have worked to cut off the followers from family and friends in the society. And they did training based on the books or sermons that Asahara done. Um, and they also did some intensive training, like, like fasting or breath holding. And these kind of training, uh, it's quite tough mentally and physically. And through this, they sometimes, the followers sometimes lose ability to make radical decision. That is one point. And uh, I have to say one thing, initiation. Uh, initiation usually used as a formal entry to an organization or something like that. But in Omu, they use this word to give Asahara's energy to followers. The very famous, uh, notorious one is the blood initiation. That is uh, to drink some liquid. In that liquid, Asahara's blood is mixed. Through, they believed that through this, they can get Asahara's energy and go to the higher stage of the enlightenment. Them, other traits. Aum Shinrikyo has a rigid hierarchy. The top is, of course, 
Asahara Shoko. He called himself Guru Wasonshi, an uh, enlightened man. He re uh, the person reaches the final stage of enlightenment. And if you, uh, the Omu, they said, if you train well, you can go up, 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 and get to the higher stage of enlightenment. And Asahara also claimed that he was a reincarnation of some gods. And Om Shinrikyo also introduced the ministerial system. They have MOFA, a Ministry of Fine Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Science and Technology. And with their effort, Om Shinrikyo Om Shinrikyo gained more followers. Look at this chart. When they started the Om Shinsen no Ga in 1944, uh, 84, it was a yoga circle, circle, and only 15 people there. But in 10 years, and on the year of the sarin attack, they have more than 10,000 followers. And uh, the followers I showed you is the followers in Japan, and they also followers in the world, such as Russia, United States, and Germany, and Sri Lanka. They have branches. And here comes in some point, they come to militarize. They decided to militarize their, themselves. Uh, there are several backgrounds talked about. One is one could be doc their doctrine. Their doctrine justifies murder to rescue his or her, or her soul. His or her means that person who murdered. If you want to rescue his or her soul, you can murder him or her. And the other thing that could be a trigger for escalation of their militarization is the defeat in national election in 1990. Uh, Aum Shinrikyo uh, ran the, that election and 25 candidates tried to get the seat, but no one succeeded. And it is said that on this point, Asahara thought, I mean, Asahara gave up to get power inside the system, inside the Japanese system, but to destroy or break the system. And they come to militarize or escalate their militarization. And the photo I'm showing you is the one taken in 1990 for the national election that I mentioned. They made the political group like Supreme Truth. You see, we see the signs of the political group, okay? And how they militarized themselves. They manufactured automatic rifles some parts are smuggled from Russia, uh, it is said. Then they produced uh, biological weapons, botrinus, anthrax. Then also they produced chemical weapons, VX and sarin gas. Actually, the photo you are looking at is the place, a factory, they manufactured the chemical weapons. It is called Satyan Satyan number seven. Some of you may have heard of that name. And with these weapons, they conduct many heinous crimes, including murders and attempt murders. Here is a sequence of incidents. I don't talk about that very, you know, detailed, because all, it is all publicized, and you can easy to 
find out about that. Okay, and here, sorry, attack. March 20th, 1995, Tokyo subway gas, Tokyo subway sarin gas attacks. On March 20th, 1995, five cult members pierced sarin filled plastic bags with the tips of umbrellas to disperse the gas in five train cars on three train lines that would pass through Kasumigaseki Station, that is the center of Japanese bureaucratic system. And 13 people were killed by sarin poisoning and more than 5,800 people were injured. And by the way, one uh, victim was has passed away in March this year, so the people who killed could should be 20, I mean 14. And if you look at the video again carefully that I showed just minutes before, you can see how sari was spread in Tokyo using Metropolitan Subway. I'm not put that uh, chart or map on here, but you can easily find on my on our video. And this is the photos of right after the sari gas attack. And please let me add one thing. I thought three tri train lines were attacked by them. And these three are Hibiya line, and Chiyoda line, and Marunouchi line. And Chiyoda line, you may notice that the first a uh, victim found or showed symptom of the sarin attack uh, is on the Chiedo line is there that between Nijubashi station quite close here and to the Hibiya station. So that happened very close here. And because of the sarin attack, all Japan was shocked. Indiscriminated murder by cult, terrorist attack in Tokyo. No one believed that, but it happened. Then what happened after the sarin attack? Uh, May 1995, Asahara was arrested and indicted in June 1995 to March 1996. And long trial was done. And February 20, 2004, Asahara was convicted and sentenced to death. And as you may know, July 2018, two years ago, Asahara was executed with 12 cult members. That is what happened relating to Omu. And let me move to the current situation in Omu. Oh, sorry, I forget about the important thing. 2000 and since present, PSIA has conducted surveillance of Omu Shinrikyo. And current situation in Japan. In Japan, we saw approximately 1,650 followers in Japan and 31 facilities in Japan, all over Japan. And their total assets is approximately 12.9 million. And the last thing I'd like to stress is they are still active with absolute faith in Asahara. Uh, 
uh, it is the current structure of all machine nickel. Oh, they seem to divide it in three groups after the can I say the criminal investigation to Asahara and all machine nickel. We saw that there is Aleph group by led by Yamada and circle of rainbow light, uh, Hikari no wa, led by Joyu. By the way, uh, have you seen the face of that guy wearing pink? Uh, just right bottom of the this slide. Actually, you can find his face just outside this room because he was a spokesperson of the Ohm Shinrikyo and Ohm uh, had a press conference 1995 April to, how to, how can I say, to make an ex excuse their, that they are innocent. Uh, maybe not in this building, but the old one. Uh, they are uh, utilized media very well, right? And then facilities. There are 31 facilities in Tokyo Metropolis and 14 prefectures. Uh, this is as you see. And also, I should add that uh, Ohm Shinrikyo is designated as terrorist organization in United States and other countries. And this is the growth of the group's assets 2000 to 2019. Why they can get some, get such money? How? They are selling training equipment, very expensive training equipment to the followers. And they get donation and they collect fees from the followers in order to participate for I'm gonna say seminars or ceremonies. And let me back a bit. The number of the followers are Sorry, I did not did. Yes. Okay. 2019, some of the uh, technical <laughs> problem, it says uh, something wrong, something, some Chinese character on 2019, but it is around 1650. The, the number of the followers. Let me back to the point. Oh, sorry. And sorry, I get uh, some memo from my colleagues. I have to collect what I said. I said uh, they have twenty point nine million dollars. It's asset, but nine that incorrect. Twelve point nine million Japanese yen. <laughs> Sorry. Then can I move to the next point? Uh, what we afraid most is the followers absolute face in Asahala. Let me show you some examples. The first one is the altar. This photo is taken on the at the time of the on-site inspection done by PSIA. It's done November 2019. Can you see the Asahala's face uh, very center of this photograph. They still put Asahara the photo in the altar. And his back is three gods. Uh, they are the ones Asahara claimed himself uh, that link incarnation, their incarnation. And on the altar, you can see some fruit 
persimmons and bananas. Uh, they are Asahara's favorite. Then, next one, uh, this is taken by the other situation, other occasion, and the other uh, facilities in 2019. You can see also the Asahara and three gods. And second point I'd like to stress is uh, we can see their absolute facing Asahara is that they do trainings based on teachings of Asahara still. They use these textbooks for training. They recite and memorize these books written by Asahara and sermons recorded by their followers. And they also conduct exam how the followers memorize and well study these issues. Um, talking about the trainings, they conduct initiation still. I told that uh, initiation in Omu is something like to give Asahala's energy to the followers. Uh, these are the equipments found in the facilities of Om Shindikyo oh, during the surveillance uh, on-site uh, inspection by PSIA. The left part is uh, settings for initiation of sound. How can you do that? Is it's uh, the speakers are uh, set like a circle, and you're going to sit center of the circle, and Asahara's, and you're going to hear Asahara's words, maybe in loud voice. Through that, you can get, you can hear their words. You can hear Asahara's words uh, like you're listening that inside the chamber of the pyramid and you can give you, you know, extra power. And the right one is equipment for initiation of fire. Uh, so you, by using this, uh, you can get Asahara birds through electric current. Now, if you hold the electrodes, can you see that? Uh, by, with your both hands, your the Asahara's word transformed into electric current will flow through your body. Then this is a perfect salvation initiation, very famous, I guess. Maybe you have seen the person um followers wearing that helmet like device. Uh, it is an electric helmet, and it delivers shocks to the to your scalp to synchronize your brain your brain waves with those of Guru Asahara, and you can reach higher level of holiness through this initiation. And one more thing that shows an absolute face in Asahala is that sweet water. How sweet, I don't know, but they said that uh, this sweet water, it is uh, used during the, it has been used uh, since from the Asahara's day, not like a new one. Uh, the water is miraculously holy it, is, it was blessed and purified by Asahara's verses. How? Asahara's verses were transformed into electric signals and it is infused into this water. So if you drink or use cooking for this water, you can get Asahara's words.
and we can find almost all facilities this sweet water even now. Then let me come to the last point I'd like to explain. You're concerning about the use, uh, we are concerning about the use. I'm going to say two things. One is inside the OM, the OM group. They indoctrinate youth followers severely. You see? Uh, the case of the followers. The left of this slide is a teaching material for children. It is uh, said a, a true, supreme truth for elementary school kids, it says in Japanese. In the right one, it is a kind of playing cards. Uh, they call the Shindi Karuta, Supreme Truth Karuta for kids. Uh, there is a cartoon like Asahara's face there. And they use these uh, cars to indoctrinate the young followers. Then, the recruitment. Omo, especially Aleph, is quite actively recruiting young people by hiding the name of the cult. This is a photo taken by our officers. The last, the left one is the uh, OMO followers uh, kind of talking to the people in bookstore. And the right one is talking to on the street, talking to the people on the street. You see, young generation knows little or nothing about OMO sarin attack, OMO itself and their heinous crimes. So, on um, followers, they approach youth in public, like saying, uh, aren't you interested in yoga or spiritual life? Why don't you join a workshop, yoga workshop, that will make you healthy? Or they use uh, SNS to recruit these young stars. Then, when they succeed to invite the young ones to the workshops, they explain Asahara's teaching without mentioning his name. Then, they're going to explain about the, maybe they're going to talk about the Aum Sarin attack, and not as it was, but it was a conspiracy by the government, by the media. And then, at that time, there must be some connection between the followers and the who recruited. At last, they revealed the name and welcomed the young one to their group. Okay, that is how they act and what they are, how they exist. And one of the countermeasures is surveillance done by PSIA. Um, by the Organization Control Act, Aum Shindikyo has to submit the report to PSIA. In the PSI, on that level, they have to declare their asset and people or something else. And uh, PSI conduct on-site inspection when we think necessary. And that is the photo we did in 19, uh, 2019. And it comes to the last part, my message again. A quarter century since the terrorist attack, Aum Shinrikyo is not history yet. It still exists. It is a persistent pr problem. That's all. Thank you. Sorry, I talked too much. Not at all. Thank you very much, Ms. Watanabe, for that presentation. We'll go straight into questions. 
from members of the audience? Yes, uh, start over there. Uh, yes, could you speak at the microphone? Thanks. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Etienne Balmer. I'm a journalist of the French press agency, AFP in Tokyo. Um, and I had a question, uh, uh, two questions. And the, the first one is, you know, after so, so such massacres, like in Matsumoto and then the Tokyo uh, sarin gas attack, in, an, in, in many countries of the world, in the world, uh, such a religious organization would have been banned, you know, and their right. assets frozen. And you mentioned that in the US and in many countries, probably also in France, for example, or in other countries in Europe, Om Shirikyo is regarding as a terrorist organization. So I wonder, under the Japanese law, uh, is it not possible to, to, to ban, to forbid absolutely this this uh, this religious organization or any religious organization, if it's considered as as a danger for the society, this would be my first question. Okay. And uh, and the second question is about other. I mean, are you also the the PSIA? Are you also watching other uh, religious groups in Japan? And do you consider that some of them could also be violent? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the first question, why don't you ban the, why don't we ban that, how, how, how can I say, dangerous group? Or how, why, why not didn't we dissolve or dismantle this organization? Yeah, I kind of expect that <laughs> question. Uh, under Japanese law, we can order dissolve to some uh, group, but we didn't take that approach at that time. And why? <laughs> because the Japanese people thought it should be treated like it is. Like, like like what we do right now. Maybe I, I would say uh, we are not saying the way we are dealing with Omushin Nikyo as we did is the absolute or only or per, uh, perfect in any other place of the world. But we did, we took this approach and that is, you know, under Japanese law and Japanese system. And so far, we consider it, you know, how it was successfully, uh, it has been su successfully uh, preventing next um, sarin attack, right? Mm -hmm. And the second thing, no, was not up here. Oh, no, 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 we don't do that. You are not following our other religious radius. No, no, no. No. George. My name is Baumgartner. I'm working for Swiss Radio and, and Television. And um, home is still a big mystery because there was never independent investigations made by Japanese media at the, at the time. Japanese media, like today, uh, just repeat what the prosecutor's office was uh, uh, telling them. And uh, you mentioned the elections lost by, uh, by Aum, but you have also another strange uh, cult in Japan called Sokagakai, much more powerful than Aum and which indoctrinates also uh, people. And, and uh, it seems that Aum was in competition with Sokagakai and wanted to play a political role as, as important as, uh, uh, as Sokagakai. And uh, I would like to ask you, you know, who, who might be behind uh, Aum at that time, at the time of the uh, 
of the terrorist attack, uh, all made relations with Russia, all made relations with uh, close advisors uh, to uh, Boris uh, Yeltsin, all made, I don't know, 20,000 uh, followers in, in Russia, all imported from Russia arms, a lot of uh, chemical uh, uh, weapons. And after the first terrorist, uh, how could they do it without being stopped by Japanese police? It never happened. And then uh, you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the Matsumoto uh, attack. And nothing happened. The, the police blamed an innocent man, that's it. The FBI came to, uh, to Matsumoto and told Japanese police, look, you have a serious problem. It's a sarin attack, and nothing happened. And less than a year before the uh, terrorist attack in, in the subways of Tokyo, some Japanese media, uh, big newspaper, received faxes telling them something big will happen in Tokyo, and nothing happened. And you have the lawyer in Yokohama and his family, which was threatened by uh, by Ohm. And the Japanese police knew about it, but never has, had never done anything to protect uh, that uh, that lawyer because he was, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, defending people from from the left. And there was the deal between TBS and Ohm, you know. And nothing happened. And soon after that deal between TB TBS and Ohm, the, uh, the lawyers disappeared with his family, and, and uh, they died. And they died. And there was an another uh, mystery. It's the attack against Mr. Kunimatsu, the head of the national police in Japan. And we never found out uh, who, who who done it. The Japanese police never arrested him. I ar never arrested the uh, the sniper. And they left um, a badge of Kim Il Sung on, on the ground at that time. So sorry, George, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah. can we focus on the yeah. question rather than just? Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm sure that well, yeah. Nabi San knows all yeah. these. So I would like I would like to uh, to uh, to uh, ask you: uh, Was there uh, uh, there was also links between Russia and North Korea and OM? And I would like to ask you if you have investigated these links to find out if uh, behind home uh, some other uh, hidden forces were at work to weaken Japan. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Your question, as I understand, is is there anyone behind OMU for Sarin? attack, if I say simple, right? <laughs> Is that right, George? Yeah. Uh, as far as we understand, the people who has who are responsible to the Sarin attack are all captured and tried and get the right sentence. That's my question. OK. That's a very succinct answer. Do we have any other? Questions? If there are no. Yes, gentlemen over there. Yeah, my name is Kurt Sieber. I'm an associate member here. And I was it also 25 years ago when uh, the whole Sarin attack happened. Um, I, I have two questions. The one one is uh, well, could you elaborate once more about the the assets of the of the club uh, of oh, no not of the club of the <laughs> of the cult? Yeah. So uh, that's that's one. And secondly, what happened with all those uh, equipment and factories and so on, which up there on Mount Fuji, where all these uh, Get the poisons, etc., were uh, were um, actually uh, produced. Uh, what is the status of these uh, of these uh, equipments or this whatever it is now, um, and to whom does it belong? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. So the first question, sorry, uh, maybe 
I made you. Yes, yeah, sorry, I made you confused. I was confused at that time. Sorry, uh, the total assets of the Om Shinrikyo is one billion and two hundred ninety million Japanese yen. Sorry, could you repeat that again? So okay, it get very important. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, one billion right. and two hundred ninety million. Uh, yes, right. Ninety million Japanese yen. Okay. You do all of you get that? So not twelve point nine million yen. No, no, no. Point, One point three. Sorry. Billion. Okay. Actually, that we, makes more sense. We, we double checked, but missed. Sorry for you, make you confused. And mm, uh, thank you. Right. And second question: What happened to the the Satians, uh, plants? It is all dissolved. How can you say? Broken by the government, and it is uh, no more existing. And all done. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, I I have a question. Richard Lloyd Parry from the Times. Um, in recent years, what crimes? have been carried out by members of Om Shinrikyo. Mm. And based on your, your close surveillance of their activities and their publications, what reasons do you have to believe that they may in the future commit crimes? Okay, if we related, you Thank you very much for your question. The first one, uh, they, you know, this like the evasion of the inspection, right? PSIA officers go to the facilities, a, a kind of hide the things, right? And. Um, other thing, can you see you get the money? Ah, uh, they, uh, he told me that they did something like uh, illegally accepting the government money, like, uh, how can I say, welfare. How many convictions have there been? Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have the, the correct name right now. You, you don't know how many convictions there have been? No, not, not right now. Okay. And what reason to think that they are a criminal danger going forward? Mm. Okay, uh, the basic fact is that there's still, uh, you say, uh, maybe I should say that uh, our investigation is not directly uh, connected to the criminal affairs. We are uh, doing, uh, we are gathering intelligence related to the public security, not necessarily how can I say, how can I say that uh, directly going to the criminal affairs, uh, like the, the more broad to the issues that can endanger public security. So if we, we so see Omu is dangerous, but not in like, like, like they do right now some criminal affairs. They do right now some kind of sarin attack, but we have to closely look at them. Not to, they go to radicalize, they do something what did in 25 years ago. Right, because the, the reason I ask is that your, your detailed description of, of what they're doing now mm -hmm. um, suggests a, a group of rather crazy people with very strange beliefs. 
I think most people would agree on that, uh, which very, and very few people would share their beliefs. Um, but I don't understand why you think they're dangerous. It, it seems like the worst thing they're doing is not, is not giving their bodies to their families for burial. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why you think they're dangerous oh, now. dangerous. I mean, I, I mean the, the title of your talk on here is um, Unchanged Nature of Om Shinrikyo. But all, all I can see in what you've said is the changes that have taken place in 25 years. 25 years ago, they had 10,000 members. Mm -hmm. They had millions and millions of pounds in assets. They had a helicopter, for example. Mm -hmm. They had a, a, a guru who was alive. Uh, they had followers in Russia. Mm -hmm. They had factories which were producing guns and military-grade uh, weapons and gas. They have none of that now. Where is the danger? Oh, okay. Uh, maybe if you, how do you understand danger? <laughs> it is. It depends on how how do you understand the danger. Is we think it danger and because they keep Asahara's absolute face and they. I'm kind. Of, they are still stick to the teachings that Asahara taught. I that I mentioned justifies murder, and it still exists inside them. So that's why we think they are still danger. And you know, if what the one thing I'd like to stress here is, you know, they seem uh, shows. Uh, how can I say? Base, oh, I can say. Uh, there, you know, it, it has been 25 years, and uh, we are start to, we have been thinking Om is the past, their history. And they start forgetting about that, and they put that into the closet and then forget about it. And that is what we afraid most. Okay, can I ask you about that specific point? Uh, the doctrine about murder mm -hmm. uh, was, was very uh, famous at the time. Mm -hmm. In recent publications or speeches, have they repeated that doctrine? They use such uh, textbooks still. Oh. Can you? George, we're c coming up to the end, so can I ask you to keep it very short? Yeah, you, you said that um, Ohm wanted to establish a, a dictatorship in Japan. Uh, based on what evidence can you can you give us some evidence of what you what you say? At that time, you mean right? Based on what evidence? The court case, the own court case for ten or more years, never, never. Never provided any evidence. So I'm asking you, what, what, what evidence? Evidence of what? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't get your question. Evidence that they wanted to establish a dictatorship. That's In the Japan? Question. Oh, yeah. Asahara's teaching, of course. Oh, hi. Because uh, Asahara's teaching, he talked about that uh, many times. <laughs> Isn't that enough? No. Okay, <laughs> not enough for you. <laughs> Could you show them the screen once more the, uh, okay. the, the website? The, the ah, yeah, thank you. Very sure. This one, he, yeah, thank you. They introduced a ministerial system like, uh, exactly like a government. Isn't that enough for you? Okay, that's a kind of difference in. Well, well hang, on, hang on, George. Uh, our, our time is, 
officially up now. We have a request for one short question here. Is that all right, Watanabe-san? Okay, please. We have one more question, please. My name is Leo Grillier. I'm an Italian journalist. My, I'm short, and my question will be very short. I understand that Japanese have a very soft approach toward terrorism. How many agencies are actually protecting the country for this threat, besides yours? Mm -hmm. You mean the well, could you? Uh, I think the question was how, how many. How many uh, Japanese agencies are protecting the country against terrorism? Oh, maybe uh, I can name uh, LPA, National Police Agency, and we PSIA. That's me, and uh, I guess mainly two. Including yours. Including us. And there are some other agencies collaborating to counter terrorism. You know, Japanese like to collaborate. We love to do collaboration. Mainly National Police Agency, National Police Agency, and us. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, we, we are out of time now. I, I think that everyone who had questions has had an opportunity to ask them. So we will wrap up there with our thanks to Ms. Watanabe and her colleagues from the PSIA. Um, it's an organisation that is, is very little known, but we're very glad and grateful that they've come to the club today to talk about their work, and we hope that they will consider doing so again in the future. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I give uh, 30 seconds? Again? Of course. More than 30 seconds. Okay. I'd like to show you the short version of the film. Sure. <laughs> A quarter century has passed since the Aum Shinrikyo cult committed an act of indiscriminate terrorism by releasing the nerve gas known as sarin into the Tokyo subway system. Even now, the cult group continues to hold onto their dangerous ideology. Aleph, in particular, is using social media and events to recruit new followers. This is a problem that persists even today. So that's the executive summary. <laughs> yes. Um, you can see these videos uh, on our website also. So please visit our website if you want to know more and get more information on that. Thank you. Thank you very much.